This is a medic's normal attack. And after some setup, this is how strong you can make that same medic's strongest attack. That is over 225 times the damage. So how did we get here? Vital Hit is an attack that scales in damage based on the average percent of HP your party has. If you're at full health, you've got yourself one of the better single target attacks in the game. One health remaining, and yeah. This skill is exclusive to Etrian Odyssey 2 Untold's Medic class, a class that also has a skill that can bring your party's HP percentages above 100%. And of course, if your party's average HP is at 200%, the damage Vital Hit does is doubled. I think you can see where this is going. There is a problem though. Vital Hit and Overheal are the capstone skills of two different skill trees, so you're not even going to get both of them to a relevant level until about halfway through the game. And you also have to ignore everything else you might want a medic to do. That's not ideal. But that isn't the only roadblock. In fact, even if getting both of these skills on the same character was easy, you probably wouldn't want to. You need to spend a turn charging your overheal, and the overhealed HP only lasts until the end of the turn. So you spend turn 1 charging your overheal, you spend turn 2 using a party heal to get everyone above 100% health, and when it's time to use vital hit on turn 3, your party isn't overhealed past 100% anymore. Not ideal. But this is Etrian Odyssey. Just have two medics on the team. Vita Girl on the front lines to spam vital hit, and her twin sister Metagirl in the back overhealing the party and getting us the damage boost. But this strategy still has a pretty major vulnerability. Since overheal needs to spend a turn charging, the party is left vulnerable to getting killed every other turn when there isn't a healing skill going off. There are a few solutions though. The meme solution is to add a third medic. Anyway, we'll take three... me dicks? Medic. That way, beyond the first turn, you can theoretically get over 100% of time on overheal, letting your frontline medic get maximum value out of vital hits. But that first turn when the first overheal is still charging is still a huge liability. Medics have the second lowest HD pools in the game, so on turn 1, any big physical attack has a good chance of outright killing at least one of them. This guy, for instance, always starts battles by pulling out a gun and shooting someone, and if they die, another medic has to spend their turn reviving them, which takes away from their ability to enable the vital hit strategy. While running a team of 5 medics is definitely viable, I decided to go with a less boring option. I will still be getting a third medic soon, but for survival, I got myself a tank. Beatrice the Beast. Even if you spent a lot of time with the series, you might not know what beasts even do. It's a class that only exists in Etrian Odyssey 2 and Untold 2, with a focus on redirecting damage to itself. When they use the Hit Taker skill, if an enemy tries to hit anyone in the party, the beast will take the damage instead. This class is also very well equipped for the job, having the second highest physical defense stat in the game. So not only will the damage be absorbed by the party member that will take the least damage, beasts also have the highest HP pool. So if my 200 HP medic takes 100 damage from an attack, she goes down to 50% health. But if my beast with 300 health takes 60 damage from that same attack, he is still at 80% health. And remember, our big damaging skill only looks at HP percentages, so this is a very big deal. Beasts also have a unique interaction with HP percentages. They can spend their meter on a skill that triples their maximum HP while giving them a full heal. So just by existing in a state at high health, our vital hits get a multiplicative 40% damage boost on a standard 5 member team. Beasts do struggle a bit against magical damage though. Magic defense is based off the magic stat in this game, kinda like in Pokemon's first generation. But beasts have a unique interaction with an overpowered DLC item, the bikini armor. Yes, you heard me right. Bikini armor is one of the best armors in the game. It cuts damage from all the major elemental types in half. For most characters, its main downside is that it takes up the armor slot that would usually contribute the most to your physical defense. Beasts use a completely different armor slot for most of their defense, so they can have the best of both worlds, with good physical and magical damage mitigation, on top of the best damage redirection skills in the game. But the game is more interesting when you're not just abusing the broken stuff, so I usually don't use DLC. All my other party members will be pretty good at taking magical damage anyways, so I can usually get away with my beast not using redirection on turns when I'm expecting big magical hits. That lets me spread the damage throughout the entire party, letting everyone survive. Now getting back to forming the party, my plan for dealing damage revolves pretty much entirely around spamming the Vital Hit skill. While it is a very good skill, putting all your eggs in one basket when it comes to damage isn't really ideal. A lot of enemies have elemental weaknesses and physical resistances, so it's not uncommon for the correct elemental damage type to do something like 3 times as much damage when compared to an equivalent hit from a physical damage type. It sure would be nice if we could take a really good damage skill and change its damage type from Bash to one of the magical damage types. Fortunately for us, Vital Hit isn't the only skill this game got experimental with. Exclusive to Etrian Odyssey 2 Untold, the Alchemist class got a rework. In other games, they typically spend most of their time sitting in the back and spamming the super effective elemental move like you're playing a Pokemon game. While they're still perfectly capable of doing that, this game gives them an entirely new skill tree, Palm Mastery. The elemental palm attacks give us exactly what we need. 
They're cheap single target spells that change the damage of any attack or skill you use on the next turn to their element, on top of giving them a multiplicative damage boost. And yes, this effect is applicable to almost every damaging skill in the game, including vital hits. But there are a few issues with this. First, the elemental palms are only usable by the front row, where you take more damage from enemy attacks. And alchemists are by far the squishiest class in the game. Fortunately for us, this game has a class change system. We can take any party member and their stat distribution and put them into another class. So to fill the role of our alchemist, we will be creating our third medic, Palmer, and immediately changing his class to alchemist. The medic stat distribution is just way better at existing in the front lines, having higher HP, strength, physical defense, and action speed, while still having the second highest magic stat in the game. It's kinda wild. Now, what used to be the squishiest class in the game is exactly as capable of staying on the front lines as our main attacker. We do still have one more issue with fitting this alchemist onto our vital hit setup though. The elemental palm skills only transfer their element to the next attack of the party member that used the elemental palm in the first place. So I'll just have my alchemist here, using his elemental abuse skill on himself, while my big damage dealer sits beside him, wishing that her attacks could change elements like his. Or at least, that's how things would be if I was playing most other games. But Etrian Odyssey 2 Untold has a skill trading system. As you play the game and use skills, they'll eventually be turned into equipable items. They can be used to boost your effectiveness past the level cap, or more importantly, give your other party members skills from other classes. You can get copies of nearly every skill in the game, including enemy exclusive skills, and you can put them on anyone you want. What this means for our party is that not only can we give the elemental imbuing palms to our medic, which will change the element of our big damage dealing move, Vital Hit, we can also give a copy of Vital Hit to our alchemist, giving us a second big damage dealer. I should also note that Vital Hit doesn't scale based on its user's strength stat. It scales based on the same stats used for healing, which is a combination of defense and magic. It should go without saying that the medic is the class with the best stats for healing, so naturally it's the best class at using vital hits. And since Palmer the Alchemist has the stats of a medic, he is also very equipped to use the skill. So now that our two big damage dealers can deal really good elemental damage, there's one class in particular that is really good at buffing elemental damage, and that is the Troubadour. Troubadour specializes in providing buffs, giving full party damage reduction, elemental resistances, better hit rates, and making them hit harder. They can provide a ton of value to nearly any team, and ours is no exception. There's one Troubadour skill in particular that stands out for our team composition. Barbaric March gives each party member a buff that raises their max HP. This seems like it would work great with Metal Hits, since it can bring our health to even higher values, but it doesn't quite work like that. Overheal and Barbaric March actually change different stats. The Medic's Overheal skill changes the current amount of HP you have. It does not touch your max HP value. Meanwhile, the Troubadour's Barbaric March only changes your max HP value. When Vital Hit checks your party's max HP percentage, it divides your current HP by your max HP. So all Barbaric March does is shift our baseline point of comparison. This means it actually makes it harder to reach the more crazy levels of Overheal. It's still an incredible tool for survival though. Double max Barbaric March in combination with double max Overheal lets you triple your party's HP on turns when you're expecting to take a big hit. I probably don't need to tell you why that is really good. And the Troubadour class still has plenty of ways to crank up damage numbers. Warrior Song is a full party damage buff. The Elemental Fantasias gives your party increased resistance, and enemies decrease resistance to their respective elements. And the Elemental Preludes provide elemental imbues to basic attacks, as well as providing a damage buff. The Preludes don't give their elemental imbues to skills like Battle Hit though, so they don't obsolete the Alchemist Palm skills. But their damage boost does apply to skills. For some reason. <laughs> In this game, buffs that fall into the same general category of just increasing the damage you deal are coded to suffer from diminishing returns when you stack them. But this isn't true for these skills. Warrior Song is one of these damage increasers, but the game treats the preludes as just elemental imbues. Nothing to see there, move along. And the Fantasia skills? No officer. These are just a way to mitigate the elemental damage we take. The fact that they let us deal more damage to enemies is just a convenient side effect. This means they can all stack together in all of their multiplicative glory. So we've got our team. Our primary damage engine is Vita Girl the Medic and Palmer the Alchemist. They deal damage with vital hits on turns when Metagirl does a full party overheal. Beatrice the Beast and Ruby the Troubadour's jobs are to make sure our damage engine has as much uptime as possible by making sure everyone stays alive. And on turns we know that's taken care of, they can provide buffs to our party's damage. So let's walk through what a normal start to a boss fight is like. This is Artolind. She is weak to ice. And this is Wilhelm. He is weak to fire. On our first turn against this boss, our two damage dealers use Fire Palm to imbue their next attacks with the Gunner's weakness. Our beast uses Hit Taker to redirect damage to himself. We need to do this because the Gunner's opening attack is a damage roll to kill our other two frontliners. I learned that lesson the hard way. Our support medic charges an overheal, and our Troubadour casts a party-wide attack buff.
we came into this battle with a buff that nulls the first status statement that gets cast on our party. This nullifies the mage's first attack. Turn 2 is an overheal turn, so we can use our big fire immune vital hits on the gunner. Before we make Palmer use Vital Hit, I make him activate his Force Boost. Remember how I mentioned that the Beast class can spend meter to triple their HP? The Alchemist version of the skill gives them an extra 65% damage multiplier for 3 turns that activates when hitting an enemy's elemental weakness. It's pretty good. Our Beast will not be tripling our HP, even though it would multiply our Vital Hit damage by 1.4. You'll see why soon. Since this is a turn when our entire party will be overhealed, we're safe to let her use a debuff that increases her damage. Metagirl uses her full party overheal, and our Troubadour will be boosting the fire damage we'll be dealing. Look at these numbers. This is the power of multiplicative damage stacking. And remember, this is without tripling the beast's HP. Now we've just got to do it again. Vita Girl will be moving our focus to the mage with a nice weakness, because in the next two turns, Palmer will be killing the gunner on his own. Our beast is going to redirect damage to herself, making sure everyone is safe as overheal gets charged. And our troubadour casts an imbue spell that boosts Palmer's damage. Since the gunner has been dropped below 75% health, he'll be using an attack that will deal good damage to all 5 party members. Our beast is going to try to redirect all the hits to herself, and die in the process. This is to ensure that everyone in the damage engine will survive. You see that hit? If our beast didn't sacrifice herself, the damage dealer we poured all our buffs into would have died before he unleashed his big attack. So it's turn 4 now, and we're in position to use our big damaging move. There's just one problem. The big damaging move we're clicking is dependent on our party's HP percent, and one of our party members is lying dead on the ground with 0% health. This is not ideal, but Metagirl still has one more trick up her sleeve. I've told you what happens when an alchemist or a beast uses up their meter, so what happens when a medic spends their meter? It's pretty underwhelming, just making her a bit better at healing. But this game also has another meter related mechanic. By shattering the meter when it's active, every class has access to a crazy super move, the Force Break. Let me introduce you to Medical Miracle. It revives the entire party from death, restores all status ailments and binds, heals their HP to full, and most importantly, since we charged overheal last turn, Medical Miracle can overheal everyone. This skill is wild. So if the Meg super move is this good, why don't I also use the Alchemist super move? A big damage full screen nuke. Well, that move kinda sucks. While on paper its damage numbers are good, it can't have its element changed by the elemental palms. This means it can't take advantage of the 65% damage boost we get by using the meter normally. It can't even make use of the enemy's reduced fire resistance, so vital hits outdamages the super move by a lot. It's really sad. So what is our troubadour gonna do this turn? We've stacked the three big damage buffs on Palmer, and adding anything else would cycle something out of a buff slot. Fortunately for us, the troubadour also has a crazy good force break. For one turn, it gives us 50% damage reduction and a 50% damage buff that stacks fully with all other buffs while not even taking up a buff slot. This is one of the biggest damage enablers in the game, so let's watch the magic happen. It should go without saying, but getting over 2000 damage is pretty good by this point in the game. The gunner was supposed to have a whole other phase at 30% health, but we skipped right past that in one hit, so we've gotten rid of the big damage dealing threat. But the battle definitely isn't over yet. Now that the mage's partner is out, it's time for her to use her own meter. From this point on, her attacks are going to be hitting way harder, and can hit the entire party. Naturally, the counterplay to this is stacking damage mitigation on someone that can take the hits. So this is why I've been saving my beast's meter. Now that I've shown you how I do a big damage burst with this team, it's time to go over the defensive game plan, even if it's not really necessary in this fight. The beast redirects damage to herself as overheal gets charged, and our troubadour casts a full party defensive buff. Of course, we aren't going to let our damage engine get interrupted just because the enemy is hitting harder, so those two will be using Ice Pump to take advantage of the mage's weakness. The next turn is an important one. The mage is going to do another full party attack, 
this time trying to bind a random body part with each hit to reduce our usable skills. We really don't want our beast to be unable to use her skills next turn, so we won't be having her take all the hits. Instead, we need to make sure that everyone else can take the hit. To ensure our beast isn't bound next turn, we have her use Lick Wounds, a healing skill that can remove binds. And to further increase our survivability, we'll be having our Troubadour cast a buff to raise our max HP. This lets Overheal bring us to an even higher health value. It's important that the max HP buff happens first so Overheal can properly stack. Unfortunately, our beast wins the speed tie. Her unbinding move comes before the mage's binding attack. Fortunately for us, we still didn't get armbound. Now we've reached our final turn. Just like our meter skills, our opponent's meter will run out after this third turn of use, so she'll use her force break here to end the battle. The nice thing about running double medics is having two instances of medical miracle. This can be a real lifesaver in boss battles. Even if it's not really necessary now, it's useful insurance to have. My beast uses a force break of her own to counter the bosses, and the rest of my party does some filler attacks. Yes, you saw that right. That attack was impossible to dodge, and strong enough to kill my bulkiest party member 16 times over. But she redirected every hit and survived because she's such a good girl. We've just made one of this game's biggest roadblock bosses look easy. So yeah, a vital hit party is pretty cool. But that leaves me with just one thing to do. Just how do we get to that big number in the thumbnail? And more importantly, who is stronger, Vita Girl or Palmer? It's Palmer. The 65% damage boost on super effective elemental attacks on top of having elemental attack up and the elemental palms in the skill tree, which lets him boost those skills above their level cap, makes him the clear winner when it comes to clickbaity single hit damage. But Vitagirl's physical damage will still be better. This is because she can overlevel physical attack up and vital hits, and just click vital hits every single turn. Anyways, we'll be comparing what Palmer can do with full investments with what he'll be doing with his normal attacks. For our max damage setup, we'll be using the same set of buffs and debuffs as last time, but this this time, the skill levels are double maxed out. All the skills I'll be using are ones that you want to have a lot of levels in anyways, so having everything is definitely doable at about this game's halfway point. At least as long as you get some really good RNG when it comes to the drops of the equipable skill items. The only skills I'm using from outside my class choices are some low-leveled enemy defense debuffs. I just had those lying around in this file. Now all I need to do is replace my frontline medic with a second beast who doesn't need to do anything besides triple his max HP. I activate an overheal boosted medical miracle to get my party to double their HP caps, activate the Troubadour's damage boosting force break, and my analysis boosted vital hit deals 17,796 damage. So yeah, Etrian Odyssey 2 Untold is a cool game. Go play it. Though I should probably warn you, before you go out and buy Etrian Odyssey 2 HD on Steam or the Switch, most of what I'm doing in this game does not exist in that game. Even though Etrian Odyssey 2 Untold and 2 HD are remakes of the same game, the games don't really have much in common when it comes to gameplay. And if you can't tell, I have a strong preference for Untold. It's just a shame that the coolest games in the series are stuck on the 3DS. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe and comment. It really helps. And if you're feeling generous, I have channel memberships available. My name is Bulk, and I am bad at life.